19 episodes down and one to go. The time has come to review The Clash of Triton. In this special episode, King Neptune is sad on his birthday because his son, Triton, isn't there with him due to being imprisoned. When SpongeBob tries to make matters better by setting him free, Triton imprisons Neptune and starts terrorizing Bikini Bottom. This episode was originally number 6 on my top 20 worst list, simply because I deemed it a disappointing special. SpongeBob. I know how to use these. <laughs> Versus Triton. Nothing can stop me. <laughs> In an epic battle for Bikini Bottom. My feelings on the episode have changed a bit since then. Out of all the SpongeBob specials I've seen in full, this is the worst one. It's worth noting that there were five writers working on this, which sounds like overkill for a 22 minute episode. I don't know what went on during their writing process, but the result feels like there were way too many cooks in the kitchen. Most of the story is centered not around Neptune's vengeful son causing chaos, but Mr. Krabs trying to exploit Neptune's birthday party for, you guessed it, money. Rather than blending into a cohesive story, these two plotlines end up competing for screen time, like they were two different episodes being forced together. If Neptune doesn't cheer up soon, me business is ruined! Why was this part of the story needed? Triton imprisoning his own family and wreaking havoc on the mortal world is an interesting enough conflict. Instead, Mr. Krabs' scheme takes so much precedence that the quote-unquote clash feels like an afterthought. What should have been the meat of the story, Triton capturing Neptune, destroying Bikini Bottom, and Spongebob and Patrick setting out to stop him, are all crammed into the last five minutes. Much like House Sitting for Sandy, way too much time was spent on exposition and scenes that were needlessly dragged out. Triton is our son, but as you can see, the king... But I suppose I could tell it. You're right, I won't tell it. <sighs> Instead, I'm going to get on with it! I've said it before, and I'll keep saying it. Whether an animation's runtime is 9 minutes or 90 minutes, consolidation is important. Mindfully trimming away unnecessary characters, scenes, and plots leaves room to develop the ones that matter to the story most. Consolidation isn't the only issue with the writing. Each plot point in this episode feels more contrived than the last. The first of these is how Spongebob learns about Triton. A Triton here? Is there anybody missing from this party that any of you guys can see? Nope, there's nobody missing, we're all here. Hang on. Queen Amphitrite here wanted Neptune to be happy on his birthday, and knew any mention of Triton would spoil that. Yet she still put Triton's name on the guest list when she made the reservation? It just doesn't make any sense. You're telling me, man. The rest include the Divine Prison Island being accessible by ordinary public transportation, Triton's cage having a puzzle lock so simple even Patrick could solve it, and when Spongebob and Patrick sneak in to save everyone, Triton doesn't see or hear them despite being only a few inches away. Cartoon logic can be an effective tool so long as the story and world remain believable. In this case, the more absurd plot points come off as sloppy and or convenient writing, like they were being made up on the fly. Let's look at just the Triton plotline for a bit. According to writer Stephen Banks, they liked the idea of Triton being an angry teenager dealing with his father, as it harkened back to Greek tragedy. I like that idea too. But its execution here was utterly botched. One of the biggest mistakes was having Neptune reveal Triton's backstory six minutes into the episode. Triton is shown to have been a good kid who wanted to make life better for mortal people. Neptune, on the other hand, was shown to be a tyrant who only cared about power. I've just created a cure for all mortal diseases! Yeah. We don't have diseases, nor do we care whether or not the mortals contract them! After seeing that, I was more inclined to sympathize with Triton rather than Neptune, even though it was only the beginning of the episode and Triton was supposed to be the villain. It should have been a twist that came at the end of the episode, Especially considering how later on, Patrick retroactively tries to mislead us into thinking Triton was a bad seed. Do you think maybe Triton was in that cage for a reason? <gasps> At the end, they try to show that Neptune just wanted Triton to be successful all along, but he only thinks that after seeing Triton had become a destructive tyrant as well. Are you responsible for all this destruction? I, I... I, you've just given me the best 5,000 birthday present! 
Rather than being a heartwarming conclusion, it comes off as a limp, anti-humorous joke. If they wanted to go the Greek tragedy route, it would have been more effective to reveal Triton was good at heart after all the chaos he caused, then have him face the consequences of his actions. And maybe have Neptune realized that trying to force Triton to be destructive was a bad idea, that the old methods of ruling perhaps weren't the best. On the topic of characters, I wasn't thrilled with Spongebob's depiction in this episode, which felt reminiscent of his character in Dear Vikings. He wavers between being relatively sensible and tolerable, So much for work without your hands day, Squarepants! You enter to a higher calling this day! and being just loud and obnoxious. Oh! Here it is, right here! An empty seat! Mr. Krabs' depiction wasn't on the ball either, as all throughout he's a one-dimensional miser. Be gone! So who's gonna pay for these then? You'd think Mr. Krabs would at least have a little sympathy for Neptune, since he's also the parent of a teenager. On the upside, Patrick and Squidward were just fine. Humor-wise, this episode doesn't offer much. There are a couple visual gags that might get a chuckle, like this shot of Neptune on his throne. <sighs> or this gag with Mr. Krabs. Oh, could we please maybe watch them eat? Why in Neptune's name would I let you? It was a nice play to have Krabs' subconscious knock the idea into him, like how some ideas just hit you. Unfortunately, most of the jokes fall flat. Some of them are low-hanging fruit you can see coming from space. Okay, so long as there's no one careless enough to mention Triton. Triton! Triton! Is there a Triton here? Other jokes suffer from having a weak setup, like this one. <laughs> Careful, this is made of imported wood. Imported all the way from that junk pile out back. On paper, that punchline sounds funny. But having Squidward tell the whole joke himself, in response to Mr. Krabs lightly bumping into the register, makes it sound forced. A better setup would be to have Mr. Krabs claim it was imported wood to impress the royalty. Worse yet, there are jokes that are just random punchlines with no setup. There was only one last resort. The island in the sky. Isn't that island a miniature golf course? No! The, the one on the other side of the river. How is this supposed to be funny when neither location has been established? It's like listening to an inside joke between two strangers. It just leaves onlookers confused. Like Atlantis Square Pantus, this special isn't interesting to look at. Bikini Bottom and the Krusty Krab are ordinary locales for the show, and what little we see of Atlantis looks like a standard palace. There's nothing necessarily wrong with those sets. The bigger issue is that all throughout the episode, there's no atmosphere to speak of. During scenes that are supposed to be impactful or tense, like Neptune locking up Triton and the destruction of Bikini Bottom, it's a bright sunny day with a clear blue sky. It doesn't fit the mood at all. Plus, you'd think a juvenile correction facility run by the gods would look more like an ancient prison and less like an ordinary tropical island. It could have at least been a foreboding jungle. And since it's a prison, put in some guards. Have it patrolled by ancient beasts. Speaking of beasts, have I brought up Neptune's party guests yet? I didn't mention them along with the other characters since they have no real dialogue, role in the story, or even an introduction. They just sit in the background the whole time. The only one that doesn't feel out of place is this old purple guy. His resemblance to Squidward helps him fit in with the rest of the cast. Plus, his robe and curled hair give him a regal air, like he's an advisor to the king. As for the other two, one of them is a mud monster and the other is a... Multi-faced lizard creature? It feels like these two designs were picked at random. They both look like something that crawled out of the Fly of Despair, not Royal Atlantean subjects. Hell, given their monstrous designs, they would have fit better as minions recruited by Triton. It'd be a more interesting role for them than sitting around doing nothing. After my last review, some folks asked me what my new least favorite episode is. Well, you're looking at it. Even Boating Buddies, for all its flaws, had one solid, genuinely funny scene, and a straightforward story. But with the Clash of Triton, I can't even say that much. On top of the weak jokes and boring visuals, the special's entire story is contrived, poorly paced, and nonsensically structured. For that it's been cemented as my least favorite episode of the show. And that concludes this episode of Animate Ball! 
Next time, we're exploring an influential film from a very different era of anime. Thanks for watching!